Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Yvonne and you have landed on Ginger Chick Rehab where I love to go treasure hunting in the wild. So today's treasure hunts were found at an auction that, and right away when I saw these at the auction, I knew exactly what I wanted to do with them. Though this 20 by 24 board is very large and hard to fit into one frame, I thought I would hold it up for you. When I saw it at the auction, I'm like, canvas, blank canvas, decoupage paper. My mind was just running with what I could order to fit onto these boards. And we are in the midst of the season. Yes, Santa Claus was my first thing I thought of. How many of you all have stared at those beautiful, large Santa Claus pictures and are like, oh, they cost so much. Did you know that you can order posters? This is not actually decoupage. This is poster from Zazzle. Oh my gosh. So it is thicker. These boards have an edging just like a canvas. They're hollow. They're not a solid piece of wood, but they do have sides. So I'm going to treat this like a canvas. And this print is just amazing. I do have some prep that I need to do to the board. Not necessarily the top, just to the sides. Just something to cover up that. You could leave it, but <laughs> I want to paint it. I want it to make it look like a shadow from behind. So I'm just going to use some Sweet Pickens Milk Paint and Lantern just to cover up those sides. So all that's all I'm going to do is I am going to go in and paint the sides just using a fan brush. I just chose the first black that I got grabbed off my shelf just happened to be the Sweet Pickens. And it's just a nice, it'll be a one coat coverage <laughs> because black and dry wood just absorbs it right in. I also did not want my sides to have any shine to it. So Sweet Pickens is a nice flat paint. So all I'm doing is just making sure that everything is nice and smooth. Just some 220 sandpaper. As you see, I painted all four sides. Now I have not tried Fusion's decoupage transfer gel. This will be my first time testing it out, but I knew that the poster was going to be a heavier and I didn't want like Mod Podge. I wasn't sure if it would be enough to hold that thick paper. I could be totally wrong, but I just knew that this product is a little bit thicker. I had worked with it just recently doing some glitter and I liked how it reacted and held on the glitter and the gl glitter didn't really come off. So I thought this was going to be the perfect adhesive to put this poster on. So when you go into Zazzle and you create your artwork, this is the image that was already there, but I could pick out the exact size. So I could pick out a 20 by 24 print that fit perfectly. I mean, it is like, a perfect, maybe here and there might be a hair off, maybe the poster isn't quite, or the wood isn't quite. I mean, just slightly, there might be a little, a little sliver off. So I'm actually just trying to make sure that I've got every spot down, that I don't have any air bubbles. I'm using, I think this is actually probably a pasta roller. I don't know if it's really something I thrifted. I don't know if it's really for what I'm using it for, but that's what I'm using it for. I just wanna make sure that I get the adhesive all the way evenly distributed, that there's no air bubbles, and then I'll just start working my way down. I'm just still awestruck at how amazing this print is. But now as I'm rolling it, some of that transfer gel is um, squishing out the side. So that's okay. That means I had a little too much. I'd rather have too much than not enough and have to keep lifting it back up. So I was just wiping it off as it was squirting out the sides. But yeah, it's, I mean, it's just 
rolling it and making sure the air bubbles are out and wiping off the excess off the side. Wow, I'm, I just, I am loving this. But I just kept working and working with it to make sure that I had it completely flat, like it looked like it was almost painted on this board. The transfer gel is matte, so you can see where I got some on the print, but I wasn't going to mess with that because I'm going to be putting a top coat that's matte on top of this, and the print itself is shiny. But all I kept doing is just kept making sure that I was rolling, and that I got the goop out from the gel out <laughs> from underneath, and that it was completely flat. But there is just a little bit of a hue that I had to touch up on the side um, where it wasn't a complete fit. I'll show you all four. I have four that I'm showing you for, with you today. Um, this is a smaller one. This is a 16 by 20. So I said you can order different sizes. This is just happens to be the pieces that I got from the auction. I, oh my gosh, I, I'm happy that I ran across this. I'm sure you could maybe do this with canvas. And probably like decoupage paper would work better on a canvas or you could put slats of wood together um, like pallet wood or just pine or cut your own pine pieces. Um, there, I mean, gosh, the, I mean, it's such a statement piece. A huge picture of Santa is a humongous statement piece. And I like just doing that shadow black that's not taken away from these beautiful prints. And when I painted my second board, I wasn't as careful about not getting it on the top. You're not going to see through that poster. And then I don't have to go back in and try to touch up some of the pine that's showing. Um, or the lightness that's showing. I think these are birch. Um, and that touched the poster. So I, I went ahead and just got that painted a little bit extra first. And so yet again, we're just going to get these sanded so they're nice and smooth. But this time I decided that this transfer gel doesn't dry as fast as like a lot of times sometimes Mod Podge starts to dry and so you need to work in sections. But this isn't drying as fast so I think I can put it on the entire board and not have to worry about working in sections. Well, I thought I painted enough on the sides, but no, see, it's just a little hair off. So either the poster's a little bit smaller or the board's a little bit bigger. I really didn't get the measuring tape to measure out because it didn't really matter. I needed to touch it up anyway. My next one I went extreme on and I painted quite a bit extra to make sure that I got plenty. But this one is a beautiful barn. Oh, I have done these in the decoupage, but look at it in the poster. Oh, be still my heart. The last one I'm doing with in this video is a classic. This, the birds on a branch is a classic, but I could not get it to be that exact size of the board. Not all of them, I guess you can't do that. Just the way that this one was longer. So it's a little on the top and the bottom is shorter. So I could wrap it over to the sides, but I didn't think that looked right because 
just the way it's not covering the board complete. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just creasing because I'm going to have to cut some off. I don't want to, but just the way that this is going to look, I think it is going to look better if I cut some of the excess off. I don't want to accidentally cut it short. So I did not cut it off before I applied the paper. Now this is a little bit harder and I'm glad there's a little bit play with the poster of getting the top and the bottom to look sort of the same like thickness of what is painted that you can see. So that is the nice thing about the poster is that you can lift it up and it's not destroying it by any means. I had the bright idea of taking um, sandpaper to just cut the edges, which worked wonderful for the one side and then the other side the, it was wetter. So it ripped the paper a little bit. Uh, you know, you'll have that. You, you know, you just kind of have to try. I didn't think I'd be able to cut it with scissors as easily, but I knew that I wanted to make sure like the edges were going to be getting glued down. Um, so I wanted to cut them off while it was still sort of wet. To seal these in, I am using Fusions Tough Coat Clear. Now this is a matte, so I chose this because it was a matte, very flat top coat. I didn't want it to be shiny. I wanted to be able to seal in my sides all at the same time because I knew that when I'm doing the top, it was going to like drip a little bit onto the side. Um, and then I'm just applying it with the sponge applicator and I'm just doing light coats. I'm not trying to put it on heavily and I will do a couple coats to make sure that everything is sealed in properly. And if you notice when I'm getting that first coat on, I'm going back through and taking off any excess, making sure there's not any air bubbles or anything like that. Making sure that it's just a nice, smooth, not bumpy, not a lot here or a little bit there, just an even coat. The other three I love as is, but just the way that this one t took the top coat and with that little bit of black edge showing, I think I want to antique it just a little bit. So I'm just taking some 220 sandpaper. I'm opening up that top coat a little bit to be able to accept some antiquing wax and a little bit of age. So all I did was go around the corner. The camera didn't go on when I hit the button. So you can see where I faded in just the colors. And then I felt like that those three birds in the middle were, looked really fluorescent orange to me. <laughs> I don't know why. Maybe it was just my vision and maybe it wasn't so much. But I thought, you know what? Waverly Antiquing Wax is just my go-to. And I think it'll just add a little bit of age. And I'm just going to flare out like a little shadow area around each one of the birds. And I think this is going to tone that down perfectly. I make every, sure that everything blends well. That just not some areas have top coat, some areas have wax. I want to make sure that everything is blended. So I'm just going to do the entire piece with some of the Verithane natural wax to make sure that it's all got that same sheen to it could you leave the back as is but I think a little bit more professional look is to cover the back up and give it that nice backing so what I'm doing here is I just have some contractors paper you buy it in rolls at like hardware hot Home Depot Menards kind of stores and I just think it gives it that nice finished look and all I'm doing is trying to cut it yeah semi to the, down to the side and then I will hot glue it on and then I will just take some 220 sandpaper and sand off the edges to give it that nice clean look.
to finish this off, I'll just add a simple picture hanging system. It, this board is not very heavy at all and that should withstand the weight. for watching today's video i know it was a quick video but as soon as i saw those boards i'm like a solid surface a big board a canvas santa santa claus oh my gosh and you know santa claus pictures are not cheap and it's fun to create your own that's what we crafters diyers that's our love that's our passion to create something out of our own hands and posters. I had never ordered posters from Zazzles. I've always ordered decoupage paper and I would definitely order them again. The bird, um, I would-ish, I would-ish if I made my own because it did because it, I couldn't get it out to the end. I did notice some air pockets, but other than that, it's still beautiful character. It is character. It is that perfectly imperfect and we're too critical on ourselves to make everything perfect and just make it have character make it be a little bit different than the last one so thanks again for watching today's video and as always give me a quick comment down which one of the items i made today were your favorite have i inspired you to go out looking for boards making boards buying boards and ordering some of those amazing santas and even that barn oh my gosh from zazzle wonderful posters i cannot say enough of, about them so thanks again for watching we will see you next time and you can see what we're up to bye